So what you should have, right? Uh, you should have a back down and at least two buttons, right? And each button is normal state and roll over state. Okay. So today we're going to introduce you the uh, Adobe Director. So you go to Start, Program, Adobe, Directors 11.5. Uh, some of you may already start learning fresh, right? Um, the idea, as I introduced you before, when you starting using Director is very similar to fresh and very similar to video editing software you know so when you look at the user interface right um, you have the stage you know like a canvas in Photoshop or in other software uh, what I'm going to do I'm going to enlarge, uh, enhance the resolution here some of you you can see the screen a little bit straight to the side so um but this one maybe is good for you guys to take a look right you have a big icon so i'm going to read it like that but you will see it's distort you know so it's not a good proportion um the recommended proportion so you should straight this way to the end it should get your resolution of uh, 1680 pixel by 1050 pixel right but in this case here for the demonstration on the screen right now i'm going to leave it like that so the icon will be slightly bigger so you can see you know what is going on better on the screen all right okay let's talk about this director here so when you're talking about um fresh right fresh is like animation program and also it can be interactive right and as I told you before fresh and director very similar have very similar life cycle you know so the director when it's invented is about to re replicate the video metaphor so that's why the interface they call everything according to you know pretend you are a movie director and the main area of your presentation is called stage so when you call this part here um, you can sizing to 50 percent you know to see what the size of your stage you know this is where you're going to show your content on here and the second part of this you know, you just see it look really familiar, right? It look like in Fresh or in After Effects or in Adobe Premiere. So this part is called score, but a lot of you might think this is just like timeline, and this is timeline. But in Director, we call this score. You know, where you score the music or where where you score the content on that all right and on each score here you will see the number right number one number five number 10 number 15 so this is like a frame you know the default on the director right now is running at 50 fr uh, 30 frame per second so this means you want the content to show one second it will consume 30 frames so that means if you want something to present in 15 seconds right so you have to time by 30 right so how many frames you're going to need right and then when you look at the number vertically right if you score it down the default is going to have like 150 so this is just like a layer in Photoshop or layer in After Effects. So where you put your content on the layer one, right? It's going to be on the bottom. And whatever you add up, right? It's going to be accurate to the number, right? 
So 150 is good enough, but you know you still can add more into this. Uh huh. Right. And on the top here is quite important here. So you can see show and high. Show and high on here. So it gives you more option, right? Each frame you can have about five or six options right there. So the first option, let's take a look, it's called tempo, right? The tempo, the default, is set at the director standard at 30 frames per second. That's the default tempo. The first one on the top. And the second one, you know, something that beyond the movie. So, you know, in movie editing software like Final Cut, Premiere, or After Effects, right? It's according to the movie standard. But in director, right, even though it gives you 30 frames per second, but you still can manipulate it. By certain frame, you can ask, you know, to wait. Like, in one frame, you can wait one second, or two seconds, or whatever second you want to, by clicking here, and you can change to, you know, whatever second you want. So this means, director frame rate speed, right? It's normal frame rate as the before at 30 frames per second, but you can alter it. You can change it to, you know, something you want. Uh -huh. So that's extra. And then you can even change it to wait for mouse click or key press. So this means you can wait to tell your movie, you know, to wait for you until someone click or trigger certain keyboard, something like that. Or you can wait for Q point. Uh -huh. We'll talk about the Q point later. Q point is like you know in the music or in the movie that you create from Premiere or a music that you score from Sabut, and you can add something called Q point on that, and it will trigger according to the Q point to synchronize you know certain sound or certain sound effects to certain visual effects in director, all right? So I'm going to leave it at the tempo, all right? The standard. And the second one is called color palette, all right? The color palette is not quite useful that much now. You know, it's just like um, the piece of the time machine that you used to use that often when the computer cannot display 16.7 million color. So the color palette is basically is 8-bit multicolor map for each system like Macintosh or Windows. So when the computer cannot display 16.7 million color or 24-bit, right? So the computer display the multicolor in 8-bit. So what is going to happen is have certain color that cannot be displayed. So you have to remap or index your color or your image into certain palette. So that's why um, right now you're not using that often because you have a lot of uh, color to display. You also have a lot of horsepower on the CPU, right? But this thing can be helpful in terms of if you want to optimize your interface to be very, very small, so you can convert from 24-bit into 8-bit, and then try to map the palette to your image on each frame, all right? And also, um, you can see there are different uh, palette that you can use, right? But in this case here, we're not using that. Uh -huh. And another one is called transition. So you can see, you know, a basic transition. That preview in director, you know, is more like PowerPoint style. You know, very old-fashioned transition, you know, like fading, fade out, or wipe, right, wipe up, wipe down, something like that. You know. 
um, you're not going to use that much, but somehow it's useful, you know, to have something like this built in. Okay, and then the next one is sound, right? Sound here, we have two <coughs> channel of stereo sound in built into the editor. Why do we have two channel? Sometimes you have a music on one track and the narration on other track. So when you do editing or try to synchronize certain visual element with you know certain sound, so you can edit your sound and put in particular move, right? By the background, you can put a single music track on that. What about if uh, each channel support to uh, support stereo sounds format? So you can import, you know, uncompressed AIFF wave, or you can compress MP3 sound and import to director and the sound is put on the soundtrack above but what happens if you need sound more than two track right so you can use your sound and save as a quick time movie and then it's going to be available in the score here so that's another way to work aloud in case you need sound more than two tracks all right and the last one you know is we call scripting language, uh -huh. scripting uh, lingo window here. So it's we call script window. So this is the most part that we're going to spend time with, and it's the most powerful area that we're going to you know use with. So um, some hint about the lingo script, right? You can see it have a number on the line. So that will help you ID that area, you know, where you want to work on. And when you type something, right? When you type something, if you know it's correct, it's going to turn blue and green. But if you type something in the wrong grammar, you know, it's going to turn black. So that way, you know, you type, you know, for example, on mouse up, you know, if I type on mouse up, you know, sometimes I'm not sure if it should be a one word or two word, right? I say on mouse up. Okay. So I misspell, right? So that's the thing is black. So if I do correct spell, you can see it's turned green. So that's where it will help you, you know, in case when you mistype something about the spell or spacing, right? And what, how we know this thing, you know, what kind of grammar or what kind of vocabulary we're going to use, right? So you have a built-in dictionary right here. So on the corner, start from A, B, C, D, right? So you can go through all this, you know, function or grammatic on that. So it's have a built-in or dictionary and how do we support to know what does it mean, right? I give you three books on your Dropbox, you know, in case you want to investigate more on that. If you find out your Dropbox on the uh, programming, uh, principal programming folder, right, you will have a new folder called DIR and that book is have three books about director. So, in case you want to, you know, investigate more, you can go to it. But if you, you know, feel you don't have time, today I'm going to brief you everything, every three book in one hour. So, it's going to be, that's why, you know, I took the camera here. So, in case you want to go into the detail, right? Okay, what else? Um, all right. So this is done for the um, the score part, right? So now we know the canvas. We're going to call a state, and the score is very similar to timeline. And another part here is called cast window or cast member. So on the casting part, right? It's just like you know a footage folder 
in you know video editing program. So when you import your cast member into it, right? So you going to have everything in cast member window right here, and you can see as a list or you can see as an icon. So you can trigger like that, click on, so you can see you know on and off, and you can delete that. And another important element here is called property, right? When you click on each palette, each palette, the property inspector on your right hand is changing according to the palette you're clicking, just like in Fresh property, right? So if you work it in Fresh, when you click on the canvas, right, or in the letter you click on state, right, you see something happening. When you I click on this, right, the property is changed according to what you selected, right? So in here, you're going to see some of the movie property. And the default setting right now is 640 by 480, right? So it's a VGA. Uh -huh. So, but the stuff that we're going to work on and we already did last week, what size is it? 800 by 600, right? So it's called Super VGA, right? So why I recommend you to work on that such a low resolution? Because I want you to do your content that should be able to open on the old machine as well, all right? And you also see the channel, which is default to 150. You can change it at 200 if you want to, you know, so the channel is just like a layer here. You, when you scroll it down, you see it right now it has 150 channel. But you know, so far I've been working on this software. I never use you know more than 50 channel. So in case you need more, you can punch in more. And the color you see the code right is saying right now is sharp F F F F F F. So what is it? It's a HTML standard code. So you can assign the color with your HTML code on that. Or you can just, you know, click on that and choose it visually. So my color recommendation for the background is black. Why I recommend that? Because to make your work look nice, you know. So your work will be look outstanding on the black background instead of white because the white right when you use on the CRT display or you know on the LCD projector you're going to see the white is very 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 strong from the light and it could disturb what you observe on your content so that's why I think black is a good idea right so now I'm going to press it back right here okay and you can see the standard control right here. You can view at 50% or 100% or 200%. You can rewind, stop, play, you know, rewind backward. And you can rule. You can trigger sound on, off, those kind of things, right? Uh, one thing about this, right? The default of the player is in loop. Right? One thing I like to mention on the control on your keyboard. Uh, if you realize, if you look at your keyboard right now, right, you're going to see two enter button on your keyboard. Two enter button. But in director, they treat these two button differently. So when we're talking about director, we're going to call the enter button that next to the letter keypad. We're going to call it return button. So it means you're using when you type the script and you want to go to the next slide, you press the return. All right? But the enter button that next to your numeric keypad or the one on the right bottom of corner of your keyboard. So we call that button is enter. So what that enter does is compile your code when you're typing your script and you want to compile it, you hit enter. So if you type something wrong, right, it's going to, you know, alert you right away, you know, it's something wrong, 
right? Or that enter button is also used as a play and stop button. So when you want to move it to run, right? You hit enter. And you want to move it, you move it to stop, you hit another enter. So it's going to stop. Alright. Okay. And the below here, you're going to see a library behavior inspection. So that's the easy version or I would say a fast food version of your programming. So you can do a prepare a package, you know, like a Big Mac or like a, you know, Big Fish, something like that. And you can make a combo of yourself by dragging and drop to your objects. So I would say the behavior, that's, that's what behavior is. And on the left, control right here, right? You're going to see a tool that's very similar to Photoshop and Illustrator. So that's pretty much, you know, standard. And all the icon on the top is also changing according to what you select on here. So that's it about the user interface. Any question? No, right? Okay, so now we're going to start implementing the program. Okay, I show you what the final result will look like, all right? The final result will look like this file here. You know, it's a standalone. You don't need director to open it. But what you do, right? You can create something and give this file to your friend. So it will run at your friend's house without need to install Adobe Director at all. So, you know, um, let's take a look what it looks like. So, it looks like that. Easy, right? Simple. So, what you need, you just need a background, right? And you need at least one or two buttons, right, of your design. And then, what happens? When you roll, right, it changes something. And why I say back backup is good? You can see right here, the back backup here. So imagine if it's white or it's green or it's yellow, right? It's going to disturb your content. So that's why you set as a back backup. And another sample. Alright. So this one is different. Give you a pink backup, you see, compared to the black backup, right? And this particular one, you can also have option, the title bar. You can see the title bar right here, right? You also can minimize or maximize, you know, to make it just look and feel like, you know, traditional window application. You can even select your background to be transparent to let your application float among other applications. Okay, so this one is just a different style of the button. Okay, so uh, you see this button, right? It have some animation. It have some animation on that, right? So one of the feature that Director Original designed for is animation. So you can see, you know, uh, animation on that as well. Okay, now we're going to construct this. Let's start that. So the first step, right? Um, when we setting up of this, you have to decide the size of your movie.